So we're going to talk about our first. We're going to talk about our first uh, new data structure, and the data structures that we're going to talk about first this year are going to be set. Now, I think I mentioned to you before in previous years, I always taught linked lists first. There were several reasons for that. You already know array lists, so I figured linked lists was a natural extension. And the the ideas behind linked lists are used in a lot of data structures later. And so that seemed like a natural place to start. The problem is that the linked list is one of the hardest data structures to understand for a high school student. And for the last four or five years, it has not gone well teaching linked lists first. So I'm going to try a different strategy this year. Maybe it will work. Maybe it won't. I don't know. Uh, but I'm going to try to teach some of the easier data structures first, and we'll save linked lists for later. We're going to learn linked lists in two different passes. First, we'll learn it just how to use the library version, and then later on in the year, we'll learn how to build our own linked list from scratch. But before that's a ways away. Let's talk about the set data structure first. And in order to understand sets, let me let me talk a little bit about taking you back all the way to like second or third grade, and. Here is, and there are two basic differences between lists and sets. Can anyone remember from third grade what your math teacher, who was probably your everything teacher at that point, I'm guessing, taught you where the difference is between a list and a set? I would say there's actually a lack of a pattern, Miss Olivia. There's something that a list can have but a set cannot have, and I've put a little hint on the board here for you. A set cannot have duplicates. Okay, that's one of the rules. And we're going to study two different kinds of sets in this class, and both of them have this important property that they cannot have duplicates. So you can see a list can have duplicates like that, but a set does not have duplicates. See that? Okay. There's another important property, uh, and that is that a list has its positions numbered and fixed. So if I was to ask you, what position is the 4 in on this list? Numerically, what position is it in? What position is it in here? Mr. Ajoji, sir, what position is the 4 in the first list? One. It's in position 1. So remember that the positions are numbered like that. And in a set, the items usually don't have a position. I say usually in math, they don't have a position. Now, we're going to learn two different types of sets in this class. We're going to learn something called a hash set. And a hash set is really is the closest definition to the math set, and it does not have any order. What that means is that when you ask the hash set to give you one of the items inside, you don't know which one you're going to get. The way to think about a set, a hash set, is it's like a bag of stuff. You reach in there with your eyes closed, you pull something out, you don't know what you're going to get. Now, you agree that's a disadvantage over the list, right? Where the list is numbered and fixed, you, put them, you create them in this order, they stay in this order. But the set doesn't have that feature. Now, there's another type of set called a tree set. And the tree set will order itself to be in either natural order when we talk about numbers, or it'll be in whatever order is defined by a compare to method. We'll look at that later. So if I was going to put this into a tree set, what order would they, these items arrange themselves into? Who can tell me? This particular set, if I put it into a tree set, what will be the order implied here? Three, seven, eight, nine. So that would be what's called natural order from smallest to largest. Now, the idea of a tree set being ordered is a little bit of an oxymoron in math, because in math, sets are not supposed to have an order. But this is one of the compromises we do as a computer scientist to try to get some of the best features of sets and combine them with the fact that we sometimes need it to be ordered. Now, let's say that you don't want it ordered like this. Let's say you want it ordered in some arbitrary way. Let's say you wanted to create a set and have it ordered like this. You can't. And if you need it in some specific order, then you shouldn't be using a set in the first place. You see that? So you have two choices with sets. No order, or order based on natural order. Those are the only two choices you have. Now, let's talk a little bit about the list versus the set. 
you can see here that the list has items in it in a specific fixed order. And so later on, if you come along and ask for the fourth item, it's always going to give you the five. There are no surprises here. But with the set, as you add and delete elements, the existing elements might shuffle around. And we'll show you that later next class. Feels kind of weird initially. So you can see that the sets have some disadvantages over the list. OK, so we were just saying that the list has some advantages because the order stays fixed as to what you set it to, whereas the set does not have that feature. But the set has one huge advantage over the list. It's faster for what? That's right. That is the right answer. It's faster for what? Yes, so if I ask the set, hey, do you have a 9 inside? It's going to give it, you the answer at a much faster clip than typically the list will. Now, let's say we had this problem on the list. Let's say we were using this list as a database. We're storing numbers there, and later on we want to retrieve them. So we want to ask this list, hey, do you have a 2 inside? How would the list, what, what algorithm would you do to the list to figure out if there's a 2 inside this list? You would do a linear search. What would be another alternative if you were willing to mess with the list? You could sort the list and do a bisection search. Let's say I sorted this list. Now, if I was going to look for a number, you agree that the big O of the search would drop down from O of n to O of log n. But there's a problem. What happens now when I need to add a new item to the list? Let's say I need to add a 6. What's going to have to happen now? I have to sort it again. And in this case, I'm going to have to move the 7's over. How long is it going to take? Big O of what? Yes, sir. Big O of n. So you can see that the list constantly trips over itself for the search operations and is always going to be big O of n, whether to search the list or to maintain the list for future sorting. The set is faster. It turns out that these two sets have slightly different big O's for recall. The set, by the way, uses a method called contains. Who can tell me what is the return type for contains? Miss Mila. It's Boolean. You ask it, do you contain a 9? And if you're working on this set, it says, yes, I do have a 9. And then the question becomes, what is the big O of a set? And as I mentioned, these two have different ones. What is the absolute best big O we can do? Forget about these. What's the best big O that exists? Yes, sir, Mr. Schulson. O of 1. O of 1. Believe it or not, that's what we get here. Now, you should be getting a little uncomfortable now, because I just told you that this hash set can return an answer to whether it contains a number in fixed time. And here's the really remarkable part. It doesn't matter how big the set is. The set could grow to like a billion items. And I ask it, do you contain the number 467,232? shoots back the answer really, really fast. How is such a thing possible? Well, it turns out, how is such a thing possible? How can we get such incredible speeds? And the answer is, we use a hashing technique. Unfortunately, we don't learn hashing until the third quarter, because it's a rather complicated topic. So for now, you're just going to have to take my word for it that this hash set has some magic that allows you to retrieve information in fixed time. The tree set is not quite as good because the tree set uh, uh, provides ordering, right? Some kind of ordering. And so its return speeds are not quite as good as hash set. And here it's O of log n. Still better than the O of n that the list operations suffer for for a recall, but not quite as good as the hash sets O of 1. So therefore, if you really want it to be fast and you don't need to store it in natural order, you go with the hash set. But if you do need some kind of ordering, then the tree set will be your choice. But you're going to pay a slight penalty in terms of the speed of the recall. OK, so I hope I've whetted your appetite. And side, by the way, I use this term tree. Once again, you don't know what a tree is. But later on in the quarter, in second, end of second quarter, early third quarter, we'll learn about trees. And you'll see how this works internally. Once again, for now, you have to just kind of take my word for it.